as we have a lot of wonderful content to cover today. Um, we're going to get started right on time. And I would like to welcome you all to our the first of our webinar series on AI for small business. Supercharge your small business with the power of artificial intelligence. This is webinar one of a series of two. And we are delighted to have expert AI speaker, uh, extraordinaire Deborah Darris presenting for today. My name is Ashley Goldstein. I am the Associate Director for Business Training at Women's Economic Ventures. Um, before we begin, I'd like to turn it over to our interpreters because we are offering Spanish interpretation to this content today. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is a bilingual message and will be repeated in English. Este es un mensaje bilingüe y será repetido en inglés. Muy buenas tardes. Para facilitar el acceso lingüístico, proporcionaremos interpretación simultánea entre inglés y español. Mi nombre es Elis González. Estoy aquí con mi compañera Marisol Olivera. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada. Si usted no es bilingüe en inglés y español, tendrá que elegir el idioma en el que desea escuchar la interpretación. Si está usando una computadora, verá un icono en forma de globo en la parte inferior derecha de su pantalla que dice interpretación. Haga clic ahí y seleccione español. Si está usando la aplicación de Zoom en un iPad, una tablet o su teléfono, busque el menú de tres puntos en la parte superior derecha de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y elija español. Les recordamos a los oradores que hablen uno a la vez y a un paso moderado. Good afternoon. In order to facilitate language access, we will be providing simultaneous interpretation between English and Spanish. My name is Elis Gonzalez, and I'm here with my colleague Marisol Oliveira. If you are bilingual, you don't have to press anything. If you are not bilingual in English and Spanish, you will have to select the language that you wish to hear the interpretation in. If you're on a PC or laptop, Look for the globe icon on the bottom right that says interpretation and select English. If you're on the Zoom application on an iPad, tablet, or your phone, look at the three dot menu on the top right, click on language interpretation, and then select English. We'd like to remind our speakers to speak, uh, to please speak one at a time and at a moderate pace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellis, and welcome again, everyone, to our webinar on The AI. interpreters would like to request for you to assign us, please, as interpreters, so that oh, we may. They've been assigned, I thought. Let me ask my co-host, Irene Kelly, to uh, support with that, because I believe that they should have already been assigned. Yeah, Ellis and Marisol, you should be on there as uh, assigned interpreters. Irene, can you help me um, troubleshoot that? Yes, I'm looking for them. Thank you very much. Yeah, they were assigned in the settings. So Marisol Oliveira and Ellis Gonzalez, I'm looking at them now. So I don't know why it's not showing up. Uh, all right. But if, for the sake of time, hopefully Irene can get the troubleshooting of that issue done. Uh, I'd love to, to jump in and get started since we do have quite a lot of content today. As I said earlier, my name is Ashley Goldstein and I am the Associate Director of Business Training for Women's Economic Ventures. Uh, we're happy and proud to be partnering with the Economic Development Collaborative, the EDC, today that offers uh, business resources and support across Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, just as Women and Women's Economic Ventures does. Uh, we're also partnering with SPORE today. We are all uh, small business administration resource partners, and we love to work together to bring meaningful and powerful uh, uh, services to all of you that are looking to grow your businesses, especially with the power of AI. Uh, Women's Economic Ventures has been around for over 30 years, supporting uh, entrepreneurs across Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. And at the end of the webinar, at the end of Deborah's presentation, I'll be sharing more about the resources that we have available for you. Uh, for our Spanish speakers, hopefully that was sorted out. Uh, if not, 
um, in the in Zoom program one background. Uh, hopefully we can sort that out. Luckily though, Deborah also speaks Spanish. Um, so we can throw in uh, a few Spanish terms and the slides will also be available in Spanish um, that we'll be sharing out at the end along with the recording. Uh, I'd also just take a moment to thank our sponsors. Weave is able to offer programs such as this through the support of our generous sponsors that you can see here on the screen. Um, and without further ado, I'd love to introduce our wonderful uh, speaker that we have with us today, Deborah Darris. Deborah is a keynote speaker, uh, expert on AI, artificial intelligence for small business, She's a marketing consultant. She's an author. I recently read her book over the holidays, uh, which I really enjoyed, uh, which is about the power of synergy. And Deborah is also a wonderful instructor and advisor with Weave and the EDC. And I just can't say enough wonderful things about uh, Deborah and the energy and enthusiasm that she brings to all the work that she does. And most recently, really jumping head first into learning all about all things AI and to how it can support uh, small business growth. Uh, and so today's webinar is really gonna be the foundations of AI for small business. And then the subsequent webinar next month, we'll uh, get into some more specific tools. So thank you again, Deborah, for being here and I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. And I am going to, if you can make me a co-host, then I can share my screen, that'd be great. I don't know, it was sharing in the practice, of course. Welcome everyone, bienvenidos. I'm so excited to be here. Um, and it says, this will stop. I think you have to stop your screen. Yeah, perfect, okay, wonderful. So I'm super excited to share with you about how you can use AI to leverage, grow, and expand your small business. If you were to ask me last year to do a presentation on AI, I would have nothing to say because I did not know anything about AI. But once I realized that AI could help the small business owners that I work with to be able to grow and scale, to save money, to save time, to be more efficient. I dived right in, learned everything I can. That's basically all I do in my spare time is go to trainings on AI. And I cannot wait to share with you all that I have learned in the last year. So the intention of this presentation is to help you to understand what is AI, not just the fear and the gloom and the, the scary AI that you hear on the news, but how AI will benefit you and your small business. I'm gonna share with you how you can use it on a daily basis, whether you're wanting to launch a new business or to grow an existing business or to simply scale and to go to the next revenue level, AI is here to help you in so many ways. We're also, I'm gonna introduce you to the top three AI programs because there are hundreds of programs. You may have heard of ChatGPT, but that's one of hundreds of programs. And there's new AI programs being developed and designed and executed each and every day, but I don't want to overwhelm you. So I'm going to share with you the three number one programs that you can use on a daily basis to help you with all aspects of your business. We're also going to talk about the future of AI because AI is not going anywhere. Like social media, like the internet, it is here to stay and knowing how you can leverage it is going to help you to be able to have the cutting edge in your field and in your industry. So I want you to imagine that you have your dream worker, the person that's gonna come in every day, super polite, thank you, please, what can I do for you? How can I help you? And they're gonna do the most boring task, the most monotonous task, the tedious task that nobody wants to do, the analyzing of data, the data entry, the design work, the writing of the copy, all that you know that needs to be done in your business, but you don't have time to do it because you're doing so many other things. You may not have the resources to hire someone to do it. You may not have the energy to train an intern to do it, 
but you know it needs to be done. So you have now an assistant. And guess what? This assistant works 24 hours, seven days a week. There is no workers' compensation. There is no health insurance. This entity is going to be doing everything that you need 24-7. And it is not a human. This is a computer system that uses large language models to learn how to understand your business, to learn how to understand your unique selling proposition, your avatar, to be able to sell your products and services with generative AI. And what is this? This is called artificial intelligence. And generative AI, which is what I'm going to teach you, is one field of AI. There's robotics and there's all these other features of AI that I'm not going to share with you because they're not relevant to you. I'm only going to share with you what is going to help you grow and scale your business. And I'm going to make it easy to understand and even easier to execute. So when we think about how can AI help me with my business? Say you have a product and you're selling it on your Shopify website. You may need to know about inventory and how much you need to carry so that you don't have stock that's overstocked and you have to carry all the burden of paying for that when it's not selling because your AI is going to be able to predict what is going to sell, when it's going to sell, and even help you on how to sell it. It's going to help you write product descriptions. So many of you know having a website is just the beginning. You need to be able to optimize your website for the search engine so you can be found and discovered by your target market. Well, guess what? That tedious work of writing descriptions that are the proper SEO optimization now you don't have to do it. You can delegate that task to your AI chatbot assistant. It can help you with really getting clarity on your target market. One of the things that we teach at Weave in the Get Your Small Business Online class is really understanding your avatar, right? And understanding what they like, what their interests are, because the more you understand your customer, the more you understand their pain and problem, the easier it is to sell your product or service. Because at that point, you're not even selling. You're sharing a solution that is your product or service to your ideal customer. So the AI can help you with understanding that customer in great detail so that when you share a newsletter, you share social media, it hits the nail right on the head. And that customer is like, this company is for me. I like this brand. I understand them. It can help you understand the value of your business if you're wanting to sell your business, if you're wanting to grow your business, how you can improve it. It can help you with a marketing plan. One of the things that I do in one-on-one -on -one sessions with people is I create a customized social media marketing plan based on your business model, based on your unique selling proposition and avatar. And thanks to the power of AI, I don't have to write it all out. It is created for me, for you, customized each day. What to post, when to post, how to post, and it will even write the post for you. It can help you write business plans and some really good ones, by the way. Obviously, you would be editing any information that AI gave you, but having a template for a business plan already done for you, that's very helpful to give you that edge. Say you wrote a book, like I wrote a book and I want to update it. I can upload my book and it'll tell me based on what's going on in 2024, if you have the chat GPT-4 version, this is what you need to add. Say you want to write an ebook because you want to have a lead generator. You know having social media isn't enough, that you also need to drive traffic to your email list and have that email following. But how do you get people to an email list? You don't have time to write an ebook. Well, guess what? AI, in 45 minutes, I've done this with clients before in one on one sessions. In 45 minutes, we can have your ebook outlined and done. Canva can do the graphic, 
And now you have the lead generator. Your email list is being built. Your social media is being distributed and you're on track. It can also help you analyze financial statements, analyze any analytics. You could take the data from your YouTube channel, upload it into ChatGPT, and it will tell you how to improve engagement on your videos, which will improve sales of your products and services. And it will give you a step-by-step -step plan by analyzing your data. AI can help you create presentations. This presentation, I'd like to create, take credit for it. It's so beautiful. I didn't create it. AI created it um, through Canva's AI program, which I'll be sharing with you. Also, you need to do a pitch deck. I have a client that's a producer and she needed to do a pitch deck right away. Canva AI not only did the design of the pitch deck, but included the content to start the skeleton of her pitch. Of course, she will edit that. But there's so many time-saving features. You want to think of AI not as a robot that's going to take away the, the world and destroy the earth. Yes, that could happen, but that's not what we're focusing on. What we're focusing on is how can it help you, small business, to save time, to save energy, and make money. The average time saved by AI by small business owners, according to Wired Magazine, is 12 extra hours a week. What would you do with 12 extra hours a week? Maybe you could do that business development. You could apply for a grant. You could get funding. Focusing as a business owner on the big rocks, on what is going to really grow our business or expand our revenue is what we need to be doing, not these tedious tasks that we can easily delegate to AI. And I'm going to show you how. Cool, right? What else can we do? There's more. Um, say you want to write a blog. You know the power of blogs because if the keywords are in the blog, and by the way, you only need 350 words to have an optimized blog, you could give ChatGPT or Bard or whatever, Jasper, whatever AI program you're using, just an outline. Write a blog on this topic. This is my business model. This is my target market. And boom, in seconds, seconds, just think how long it takes us. I know for me, it would take at least two to 10 hours to write a blog. And then I'd be rewriting it, editing it, rewriting it, optimizing it, all of that stuff. Now it is done. And you can have that weekly blog you've always wanted. You want to write an article? You can have your article written for you. Press releases. Say you want to do content. You want to start a second Instagram for another product line, easy with the help of AI. You want to start a podcast because you know podcasting is actually the new blogging in 2024. It's been that way since 2022, but podcast production is now so easy with AI. Not only can you record your podcast, edit your podcast, distribute your podcast, but with the help of AI, it will even help you book and follow up with your guests. Wow. We love it. I have a whole other webinar just on AI for podcasting. It can help you schedule clients, customer service, which by the way, you've probably been talking with AI chatbots for several years now, because that was Probably most of your introduction to AI, where you go to a website and they say, do you want to chat? And they've programmed their chat with the frequently asked questions and they're doing their best to answer you. Um, not only customer service, but also engagement. There is a wonderful AI program called ManyChat that will engage with your audience on Facebook, on Instagram, and even WhatsApp. The other thing that AI does is language translation. This presentation through Canva AI, I have it in Korean, I have it in Spanish, I have it in Portuguese, I have it in any language I want with the touch of a button. Say you're launching a new product and you don't have the prototype yet and you need photography, 
You need images. You need graphics for your GoFundMe campaign so you can launch this product. Guess what? Now with AI, you have photography, you have graphics, and there's a lot of really great programs, including, by the way, don't worry about anything I mentioned to you. I'm going to give you a resource sheet with all the information. So you can relax. So if I say something, you're like, what did she say? What did he? So one of the photography um, graphics design programs that I love is by Meta, which I'm sure you have if you have Facebook and Instagram. And it's called Imagine, imagine.meta.com. And it will create amazing photography graphics along with several other programs I'm going to mention to you. Say you want to do a video, which I'm going to be doing later. It can write a script for you for your video, because we all know if a picture says a thousand words, then a video is like 10,000. But you don't know what to say. Well, guess what? Your AI assistant does know what to say. Financial um, analytics. There are lots of great programs that you can analyze your data because it's not just getting yourself out there with the copy. You have to know your numbers, which is why we've had some great classes on knowing your numbers. You should sign up for it. Um, but AI can also assist you with getting that really clear. I always say clarity is cash. So now that you know some of the things AI can do for you, let's talk about the benefits. So obviously, AI has efficiency and automation. Because as a small business owner, I think the biggest mistakes that many new small business owners make or even seasoned ones is trying to do everything and trying to do all the tasks. So anytime that you can automate, whether it's your social media, whether it's your email newsletter, whether it's your um, sales processes, you are going to be ahead of the game. So AI is going to set you up for success. Like for example, say you have an email newsletter and you get people to download your ebook. Giving them that one ebook isn't enough because you have to cultivate that lead, right? So you need to have a series of emails so that you stay on the top of your target market's mind. They get to know you. They get to like you. They get to trust you. However, you don't know what to write. What do you do with those emails? You have to you know, get a consultant that's an expert in e-commerce. Not anymore. Now with AI, you can have an automated email sequence written for you easily. The other benefit is you know, once we get the customer, uh, we need to get repeat business, right? So how do we get repeat business? We provide excellent customer service, not just good customer service, because our best customers are existing customers, right? So we need to really personalize that customer experience. How do we do that? We can't remember all of our customers' names and birthdays and dogs' names and everything, but guess what? AI can. So we can really personalize our customer's experience, remind them happy birthday, uh, remind, remind them their, their anniversary or their dog's birthday or whatever, right? So we can really customize the experience through AI tools. We can also make decisions based on data, right? So because of all the analytic tools that AI has, we, when we think about e-commerce and we look at our website, we can find out why are people leaving? Why are people buying this product and not that product? We have the analytics without having to pay an expensive e-commerce person that could cost $250 an hour. Now we have an AI data expert that can tell us what are we doing wrong with our website? We can literally take a screenshot of our website upload it to a chat GBT and they will give us feedback on how to increase the sales on our website, what we need to do different from user experience to, um, you know, optimization. Super cool. The other thing is we can reduce costs. I'll give you a very tangible example of how AI saved me money, a lot of money. Uh, I had hired, not a lot of money, but a little bit, Every, every penny counts, right? So I had hired a digital marketing um, team to help me edit videos, um, to do captions so that they would be very engaging. 
Uh, and I, you know, they weren't charging me a lot, like $200 a month, but 200 times 12, $2,400 a year, right? I found an AI program that does the same thing this company was doing for me. And they were giving me a deliverable of five pieces of content to use a month. Now with AI, I get the same thing, but I get 20 pieces of content to use a month. And instead of paying you know, $200 a month, I pay $200 for the year. And I get triple, quadruple the content. This is an example of how AI is taking jobs. And AI isn't taking jobs per se, it's realigning jobs, right? So certain jobs that are um, repetitive um, that AI could do will be eliminated and new jobs will come up, right? So like I'm doing AI training. I never did that before. That's a new job. AI consultant, that's a new job, right? Okay. So we're definitely going to have cost reduction for all the ways that AI can help us. And by the way, most of the AI tools that I recommend are an average cost of $30 a month. And think of some of you are like $30 a month. That's high. You know, I, I pay $12.99 for Netflix. Think about it. How much would it cost you to hire a part-time person? Minimum wage is like, I don't know, $20 an hour. You know, it's going to cost $50,000 to hire somebody. Even if you had somebody part-time, it's going to cost you $25,000, right? Having a $30, having like three AI tools that are $30, $90, for under $100 a month. Can you afford $1,200 a month for AI? I don't think we can afford not to because all of the ways it's going to help us with our business. So these AI tools are not free. I'm not saying that they're free, but the investment is so low and the return is so high that it's so worth it for you to be able to use these tools. Plus, AI tools are easy, right? They know that, you know, most people aren't, you know, software engineers or high tech. So the tools, not only are they easy to use, but they keep improving them. And they're improving them rapidly. When ChatGPT first started, you know, it wasn't remembering information that we had given it. Now it's remembering information. It's storing information. It's getting to know us. It's getting to know our business. It can do more features. And um, next time when we do our second webinar, when I get into more detail, I'll, I'll share with you so many things that it can do. It will automate our mundane tasks like customer service, like analyzing data, like copywriting, like graphic design, like basically anything we would hire a virtual assistant to do. And let me tell you, I still have a virtual assistant um, and my virtual assistant, but she works five hours a week instead of 20 hours a week. And a lot of the AI tools that I have, she uses them. So she's able to get done what used to be 20 hours a week in five hours time. So of course, there is good and bad in everything. I'm not going to say that there isn't. There are some drawbacks of AI. Of course, there's an environmental impact. Anytime you have huge computers crunching data, there is energy that is being used that affects our carbon footprint. So that's definitely an issue. Um, accessibility, obviously for AI to work, you need to have a phone or a computer or internet. So it can be an accessibility issue, um, but there's wonderful programs like we, we have computers and, you know, we have um, resources for you. There's wonderful Camarillo library that has internet if you ever needed to go get internet. So we have resources that are available for you. There's also a lot of legal issues from a legal perspective, AI is a nightmare. I won't deny that. My best friend is an intellectual property attorney, and a lot of people have concerns about copyright. Um, the founder, Sam Altman of OpenAI, um, said that if anybody gets in trouble for copyright due to using ChatGPT, he, he, he will personally pay your legal fees. But from um, a general perspective, anything that is sourced from OpenAI that's coming from Google, that's coming from Bing, that's coming from there, 
um, is public domain and they're synthesizing it based on your custom prompt. So it becomes yours to use, but there's always uh, a fine line there. So, you know, you want to be, what I recommend to protect you as a small business owner is any copy that you get from ChatGPT, edit it. Even if you edit it just a little tiny bit, it becomes your own. And as for graphics, when you have the ChatGPT 4 version, the paid version, it includes use of any graphics on Dolly, which is their graphic design program that's included with your ChatGPT 4. So ChatGPT 4 is $30 a month and they have a discount if you have a team um, that's less that you can buy a team version. Um, and But it includes Dolly. So you're getting two for one and it includes GPT store at which we'll talk about next, next webinar. GPTs are like apps. So anything that you want to be able to do, it can do for you. Right. So like an example of a GPT is say you are going like I went to a show, a Broadway show, Michael Jackson, and I wanted the GPT to create me a Spotify playlist of Michael Jackson music based on the Broadway show. And they created it for me. It would have taken me hours to do that. They did it. That's a that's an easy way that I use that GPT. <clears throat> So job displacement, we talked about it. I mentioned to you how my graphic, how my marketing team got displaced because I didn't need them anymore. I had AI. Um, there are, of course, security concerns, but I have to tell you, big announcement today, OpenAI, which is the um, owner of ChatGPT and Dolly, they just partnered with the U.S. military. So do you think the U.S. military is um, concerned about security and safety? Yes. Do you think that they partnered with OpenAI? They sure did. It was in the news today. So there are security concerns, but there are also um, protections that are in place to protect the data. I would never put any very personal sensitive data into ChatGPT, just as a rule of thumb. However, um, you can use it for more generic data. Um, ethical dilemmas. Um, Almost every AI company has what's called ethical AI to make sure that, um, you know, it's not maliciously or malevolently used. However, there's always bad people in the world. So, you know, people can use AI for good or for bad. Um, there is the challenge of depersonalization. One thing that none of us love is if we go to Ralph's or CVS and instead of a wonderful or McDonald's, heaven forbid, they're, instead of a cashier, we have a computer. And through AI, they're able to detect if we're putting extra things in our bag. But before, we would have a beautiful cashier, and now we have an AI bot checking us out or ourselves. So let's talk specifically about how you can use AI in your daily workday. And this is just the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more ways, but let's just start here, okay? So number one, say you have a website that's an e-commerce website, like a Shopify website. You're selling a product and you wanna identify what are the purchasing patterns of my, I just had a coaching session with a client and wanted to increase sales on his e-commerce website. So we talked about Shopify. Did you know, and by the way, I have this in your resource sheet that I'm going to give you at the end. Shopify now has AI incorporated into it. So does GoDaddy. So does WordPress. They are making our lives so much easier because they're going to be able to analyze our website and make suggestions based on predictive analysis, AI, of what our customer's next move will be, right? You know they're already doing this with you. You look at a pair of shoes at Nordstrom's, next thing you know, you see those pair of shoes following you around, right? Because it's predicting, oh, you're going to go to Facebook now, but the shoes are still in the back of your mind. You need them. You have to have them, right? And so AI is going to help our customers go from wanting 
or product or service to needing it because it's going to follow them around and get them to, and it's also going to help your website become easier to use and more optimized. So we definitely want to use a, so if you're, if you have an existing website, go into Shopify. Um, in fact, you could go to YouTube and go Shopify AI tools, GoDaddy AI tools, WordPress AI tools, whatever your website is. And if you are not doing your website, ask your webmaster, say, have you updated my website? Are we using all of the AI tools that are now out there to increase our optimization? One of the number one things you can do to grow your business is to improve your search engine optimization. If you cannot be found and discovered by your target market, by your customers, you're not going to make sales. And you want to make it as easy as possible for your target market to find you and AI helps you with that. Second, let's talk about chatbots. So those of us that are um, selling products, even if we're not selling products and we have a service, maybe you're a CPA, maybe you're a financial consultant and you're scheduling time with yourself. You want people to schedule with you. What if you had a chatbot like ManyChat? ManyChat is what I recommend. Um, and ManyChat, can not only answer the frequently asked questions because you'll pro you'll take 10 minutes or your virtual assistant will take 10 or 30 minutes to program many chat with the frequently asked questions, which will serve as your salesperson. Then many chat will give a link for people to schedule with you to get on your calendar. So no longer do you have to play phone tag with people. No longer do you have to email back and forth. You have automated the process in getting new customers onboarded to hire you for your service, right? That's for the service business. For products, it's even easier, right? Because once you understand what the product is, what it does, the, the customer support chatbot is answering all the questions, then you take away the objections. It's so much easier for your target market to purchase from you, okay? So the other thing that the chatbot can do, which I'm sure you've seen this happen if you're a compulsive online shopper like I am, <laughs> um, but it'll say, oh, Tepra, if you like these boots, you might also like these boots. And they're right, I would. Um, so they'll recommend other products. And even if you're on Amazon, you'll notice if you started looking at something, it'll say, oh, do you remember you were looking at this? Do you want to look at it again? Because they know if you look at it again, you're more likely to buy it, right? So they can also, um, the AI um, chatbot can also give product details. Like if they hover over the product, it'll have an optimized product description. It will also maybe share reviews. One of the best things, I just want to give you some small business tips while I'm on here. One of the best things you can do as a small business owner is to get social proof about your products and services. Your new customers or future clients, they don't believe necessarily what you say on your website. They believe what your current customers or clients say. If they say that your product or service is amazing, is the best, they're using your product, they love your product, it's amazing, guess what? It's called social proof. Then there's no objection. They're like, wait a minute, all these people are using it. They like it, they love it, I need it, right? So it takes away that, will this product or service work for me? That's the question in our target market's head. Will this product or service work for me? When they see other people using it, having great success, they're like, I'm going to buy it, okay? So having, you know, um, in the chat bot, having reviews of other people, and you see that automatically coming up on certain websites, well, they'll say, oh, somebody just purchased this product or somebody just purchased this product, right? Um, they have reviews, even comparisons. They'll say, if, if you like this product, you may like this product. Compare the two. See which one is better for you, right? And then they may say, I need both, 
you're like, good, buy both. We're not mad. Okay, do you see that? So, and ManyChat has all these YouTube tutorials. So those of you that um, are active on Instagram, um, I highly, or Facebook or, or um, WhatsApp, it works with all the meta suite. Um, it's a great tool for you. Um, and it's very low cost. It's like having a customer service agent. So like I mentioned before, inventory um, management, AI can help you stay well stocked on products and services. If you have um, inventory management under control, you don't overspend, you don't overbuy, you don't have a lot of inventory that's just sitting around your house or your warehouse or whatever. You're also with AI. This is so cool. You're able to optimize pricing, right? So as you know, and you see this on Amazon, is prices are not always the same. They go up, they go down. You know, there's a little range, right? I use this app called Honey, and it tells me when something that was in my cart dropped down so I can get it when it's low rather than paying full price. Never pay full price, right? As a good consumer. So... You can, with AI optimization pricing tools, be able to see when your competitors have lowered the price so that you can stay on the cutting edge and you can have that competitive advantage. Okay, so that's cool. Um, number four, which is probably for me as a digital marketing strategist, the most helpful thing that has ever been invented is... AI for content creation, right? Whether you're using ChatGPT or Bard, Google Bard, or you're using Jasper, whatever you're using, it can help you create content for social media. However, in the next webinar that we do with Weave, I'm going to share with you how to train your AI. So your AI is only going to work as well as it's trained. And if you give it a generic prompt, like create content for me, it's going to give you a generic response. However, if you say, pretend that you are the best advertising agency on the planet, I've hired you not to get likes, not to get comments, but to increase my sales. This is my business model. This is my unique selling proposition. This is my avatar. What questions do you have for me so that you can create content that's going to sell my products and services? And then Chad GBT is going to be like, and it's in seconds, it's going to say, okay, answer these questions. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to ask you a lot of the questions that we teach in the different classes that we've, you know, what is your business model? What is your USP? What is your avatar? You know, who's your target market? Blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to answer these questions. And then it's going to be able to create content that's on fire because it's customized for you. So you don't want to give generic commands, generic prompts, because you get generic answers. Part of what I'm going to help you with in our next webinar is creating content that's really going to convert to sales. Because as small business owners, we don't care about likes. We don't care about comments. What we care about is sales. That's what pays our bills. We don't want to be popular. We want to be revenue generating, right? Right. Okay, cool. Next, five, trend analysis. So this is very helpful because it's very, if you don't already know this, it's very frustrating social media because um, the trends change with the wind. Ooh, now we're doing seven second reels. No, we're back to 90 seconds. Oh, now carousels work. Oh no, now we need to go live. What's going on, right? So to stay on top of the trends, you don't have time to be reading all these different articles and publications, but guess what? ChatGPT does, Bard does, oh, um, Jasper does. It can find out the trends in your industry, in your specific industry, so that you make sure you're on the cutting edge of innovation and giving people what they need to be able to know that they should hire you, that your product or service is the exact solution to their pain and problem, right? Cool, okay. 
um, six website optimization. Probably the first thing that I was excited about with AI besides the content was website optimization. Having a website is like having a phone, right? A phone is nothing unless it's connected to a phone number, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, whatever you use. A website without optimization is like a phone that's not connected to the 5G. What are you going to do with that phone? Maybe you could take pictures with it or listen to music on it, but it's not going to sell products and services, right? Same thing with your website. In order for your website to result in sales, I did not know this, by the way. When I first started my business, I thought, oh, if I buy a $10,000 web website, it should automatically just sell for me because it's up. No, it has to be optimized, right? Optimization is so important. And there are multiple different AI tools that can analyze your website, including ChatGPT, if you have ChatGPT 4. Chat GPT 4, not the free version, the 4 version. And by the way, 5 is coming out pretty soon. So it's going to improve not only your website performance, but it's going to enable your customers to buy easier. And when it's easier for your customers to buy, they will buy more. Isn't that true? If it's easy for, have you ever gone to a website and it was so complicated and so difficult? You're like, oh my God, I don't even want to deal with this company. Like it's stressful. But if it's so easy, sometimes it's too easy. They're like, oh, let's just use Apple Pay and we'll just check you right out. You click something before you know it. It's one in the morning. You've purchased something. <laughs> Maybe just me. Okay. <laughs> Seven, excuse me, sales predictions and analysis, right? So not only can we do um, – the, the wonderful thing about AI is it's trained to predict behavior, right? So it can predict trends even based on historical data. So you can look at your sales from last year, right? 2023, you can take a spreadsheet of your sales from last year and it can help you decide what decisions to make this year. Like, oh, well, maybe we should do our launch a email campaign at this time. So because it gets slow during this season, or maybe um, because of this holiday, we should launch a campaign at this time, because that's when we're going to make our most sales based on last year. So you're not only going to be able to predict um, future, but historical data. So you can look to see what sales you have had and how you can repeat it and improve it. OK, you can also go back. The holidays weren't that far away. Oh my goodness, time is flying when we're having fun. And you can look to see, you know, how was my holiday sales? What could, what worked, what didn't? How can I set up my campaigns this year to be even more effective using the power of AI? Okay, so before I go on, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause and take some questions, see if you guys have any questions. Um, and you can put your questions in the chat because we don't have a Q&A. So I, I have more information I'm going to share with you, but I just wanted to pause for a second before I go on just to see if anybody has any questions. There was a question in the chat, Deborah, about over-dependence on AI. You put it in the pros and cons, like one of the possible disadvantages uh, of over-dependence. And there was a request to talk a little bit more about that. Yes, I think that's such a great comment. Thank you, whoever mentioned that. Um, the thing about AI is you want to use it to assist you in creating your copy and to assist you with all these different things. You, it's not doing it for you, right? So that's the difference. And this is why AI will never take away humans because humans have humans are sentient beings, right? We we have perception, right? We're able to know cultural biases, different innuendos that probably a robot is never going to be able to get 100%. So you, as the small business owner, entrepreneur, want to make sure that you are always checking what you are receiving on your AI and validating and approving it, right? So you're not just going to say, oh, it came out with this great newsletter, let me copy paste and put it in, right? Because when you do that, 
people are going to be able to know that it's artificial and contrived, and they're not going to connect with you. So eventually, um, AI is going to really understand your core values. In fact, next webinar, I'm going to teach you how to use the custom instructions to train um, your chat GPT if you're using that to understand your business. You don't have to repeat yourself. Um, I'm going to train you how to make your own prompts and GPTs and things like that. So it's going to understand you, but I would never just put it in there and use it. You always want to have using your power of discernment um, to edit it and customize it for your business. Cool. Another question in the chat. Is AI more valuable for early stage businesses or more for established businesses? Both, both, <laughs> both, both. So like, say I'm an early stage business and uh, I want to do a website, right? I had, I, I can show you, I had uh, AI, GoDaddy AI created an entire website for me. Um, and I just gave it a little bit of information. I'll share it with you. Um, so this is the website that it created on GoDaddy. Um, this menu about it put in all the all the images for me, has programs, videos, testimonials, contact information. So this website was completely created by AI. Of course, I edited it, but yeah, um, especially when you think about new businesses. Um, you may not have a lot of photography, you may not have a lot of graphics. And um, because text to image generative AI, you can have it and you could really create the visual visual concept of your product or service using generative AI that you might not have the budget to hire a photographer, a stylist, a graphic design team, et cetera. Great yeah. question. Yeah, great questions. There's a there's several really good questions. So another one is I don't know how many questions you want to take, but there's really um this is an interesting one um, around, can AI be used for complicated support? Um, I have a full-time staff member who essentially helps people do complex reporting and calculations for forms. Could AI listen to these conversations and then use that to service customers through a chat box? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's a lot of AI programs that are um, doing voice cloning. So like you could record a voice and have the answers and it will simulate your actual voice and sound pretty right on. A lot of big companies are using that already. So you think you're talking to a real person and it's actually an AI clone of your voice. Yes, that's a great use for AI. Yeah, it's a great use case. Uh, mm -hmm. This question is, I'd like to start a travel blog uh, for using AI from a travel agency, is there a company that has SEO that you recommend for creating a blog? Say that again. Is there a company you recommend for creating a blog, for creating a, a travel blog? It's saying oh. something like Squarespace, but I think it could probably be any AI. I mean, for, for, blogging. for blogging, the very best platform is WordPress. And the reason for that is I, I used to attend blogging conferences back in the day when blogging was very popular. Uh, WordPress has a free um, plugin, which is called Yoast, which is like toast with a Y. Mm -hmm. And because it has that free plugin, it makes blogs very optimized. Mm -hmm. So, and WordPress now has AI and you could, I mean, we've had people in our get your small business online class pay a Upwork person like $500 to do a WordPress site, but you could probably with AI's help, like I did that website, do it yourself. That's amazing. And the other question is also connected to WordPress uh, AI tool. And I'm assuming that's the same there. Is it, is it Yoast? How difficult is it to install a WordPress oh. AI tool? Oh, very simple. Very simple. Like if you can, if you can install like Microsoft office on your computer you can store install an ai tool yeah it's not hard at all and for those of you that are diyers that you want to do it yourself this is my best advice to you because i've crashed websites before <laughs> always make a backup of whatever you're doing right so you don't lose everything and then have like either an ipad or a second computer or a phone where you're watching instructions 
via YouTube video and then do it as you go along. So, you know, have a phone with the YouTube instructions, watch it and then implement it like that. And then there's one last question in the chat. I think it's about database auditing. Uploading AI, which one would be best to plug into SQL database, SQL database, and look for common errors and see results uh, from that? I don't know if you know anything about AI for SQL databases. I don't know specifically about SQL, but I do know that if you have the chat GBT 4.0, um, that they have basically um, GPTs. Um, and if they don't already have like a plugin for SQL, it will, they will have a plugin for SQL um, that you'll be able to use. So, um, I mean, honestly, when it comes to exploration of AI, you just got to try it, right? You just, you know, and what I've really, you have like a child, like, curiosity when it comes to this kind of thing so that you you know if you think that something that you need something done just try it the worst that could happen is it doesn't work yet um because ai is constantly grow changing and improving eventually it will work so those are all the questions in the chat okay cool so Let's finish up the presentation and then I'll turn it back over to Ashley. Okay. Uh oh. What happened? Something interesting is happening. I, I can share too if, if you need. Still hear me? Something yeah. odd is happening, Deborah. Um, I, I have the slides up and ready to share if that's helpful. Okay, I'm back. I, it was very strange, something weird. <laughs> okay. I think it's... Uh, uh, very Okay. Deborah, do you want me to share? I have the slides ready. Yes. Okay, you can go to the next slide. For some reason there's an echo now. Yeah. Is this better? No, let me see. Try now. I think maybe there was some ghost participant. Can you hear me now? Yes. However, there's still an echo. Echo. I think we fixed it. Ready? Can you yeah. hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay, so when we talk about the future of AI, it's going to, it not is going to, it is every single day improving. So the chat GPT that I used last week is already improved. Um, there are new AI programs coming out. Even the existing programs Chat GPT four is now going to be Chat GPT five. Dolly two is now Dolly three. It's it's kind of like you know those of you that upgrade your iPhone every time it changes. Like 
AI is growing at such a rapid speed. And there, you know, when it comes to ethical issues, you know, that's why ChatGPT had the big shakedown with the board and Sam Altman, because they're like, whoa, this is happening so fast, but it's going to be improving. It's going to be more personalized, more realistic, more collaborative, right? Where there is that the human feel to the AI customer service. Of course, there's going to be more legal and ethical issues. Um, it's going to be expanding to every field. Like when you think about, say you're a teacher, it'll be easier to grade papers, right? Because there's going to be AI optimization. Or say you're in the healthcare field and you're a medical professional, it'll be easier to give feedback to your patients in a more timely manner. So it's going to be constantly improving, constantly updating. Challenge is it's really easy to have misinformation with AI. I mean, because of deep fakes and everything. That's why the actors and the writers were on strike um, because they don't need writers. They don't need actors. They can simulate an actor or simulate a writer, right? So there's going to be challenges with that, making sure, you know, if we had problems with the previous election with fake things and fake stories, think about now. So it's just, it's problematic when it comes to misinformation. Um, there's going to be integration, which this is really exciting with technologies, um, augmented reality and virtual reality, like say you're a therapist and you wanna heal somebody with anxiety disorder, there's going to be ways that you can use cognitive desensitization, things like that with AR and VR, so many things. There are going to be shifts in economic, I heard, heard somebody said they had concern that they were a graphic designer. I would be concerned if I was a graphic designer as well. There's you know, my friend that's a stylist is concerned because she gets hired to go on photo shoots. And if they're not going to do photo shoots because they can use AI to create photography, that's an issue, right? So there are concerns there. Um, a lot of, of jobs are already being automated. We see that. But what are the tasks? Don't think about jobs per se. Think about tasks that you have, like that great example of the sequel right? Or how to train my customer service, right? All of those things are going to be able, AI is going to be able to learn on smaller data sets, meaning you're going to be able to have a full team of people working for you through AI. And you're not going to have to hire. It's going to be so great considering that a lot of small business owners don't have a big budget for hiring a big team. Next slide, please. Deborah, I think we skipped the previous slide, the, okay. the slide about three practical applications, oh, which is very important. We can't skip this one because <laughs> this is what we're going to be talking about at our next Weave webinar, which will give you the information to sign up for. The next one, this was kind of an overview. What is AI? How to harness it? Why it's very interesting to you? Tell a friend to come to the next one. Um, the next webinar is going to be more practical applications. I'm going to give demos. Uh, on how to use these. Um, I'm actually teaching this afternoon a Canva Magic AI. I'm so excited, I'm a Canvassador. So Canva has now made me, um, I guess, a teacher. Uh, so they're gonna give me cutting edge information on what's coming out even before it's the public and I get to give feedback from you how to improve Canva. But Canva has what's called Magic AI. Um, so for example, they created this presentation just by my typing a sentence of what I wanted. And of course I edited it and, but I didn't edit a lot of the graphics I kept because I thought it was such a great job that they did. Um, there's so many different things you can do with Canva that used to be like advanced illustrator and Photoshop that now, because Canva's um, tagline is graphic design made easy, graphic design for everyone. And they have special affinity groups for teachers, for nonprofits. Ashley, they have a group for that um, that you guys could benefit from. And they're basically um, trying to make your life easier. So you need to do a TikTok. They have a template for TikTok. You need to do TikTok for food industry. You need to do an Instagram reel for real estate industry. They have templates for everything. So super awesome. Um, yeah, so I have a whole training on Canva magic chat GPT four, which I also have another webinar on, um, it, not only can it help you write social media, email newsletters, but you have to train your GPT. So part of what I do with chat GPT training is train you to train it. Once it's trained, uh, it's never going to come in late on Monday. It's never going to want to leave early on Friday. It's never going to be sick. 
it's just going to be good to go, ready for you. Um, so ChatGPT4, I do, if you were going to spend any money on an AI investment, I recommend um, the Canva um, in ChatGPT4. And I think I have a discount, like a free 30-day thing for Canva. I'll send it to Ashley. ChatGPT4, the reason why I love it so much um, is because the, the 4 version is not limited. So ChatGPT3 was only coded up until 2022. So the data is not up to date. It's not to the current date. If you asked anything about who won the New Hampshire primary, it wouldn't know, right? Or can you analyze my website today? It's not going to have the up-to-date information. ChatGPT4 is up to the date. And it includes um, plugins and GPTs, like a plugin. Say you want to make something on Canva. You don't even have to leave ChatGPT to go to Canva because it has a plugin of Canva, kind of a plugin. Think of it as having navigation on your car. Could you, I, my mom just got a new car. I'm like, Ooh, wow. It helps you back up. Could you deal with a car that didn't have navigation at this point? No, you need it. Right? So Chad TPT's plugins like Canva, it will create the template for you based on what you typed in chat GPT and then give you a link to Canva. So it's super cool. Um, Dolly three um, is a graphic design program that's included in chat GPT for the paid version. So it's wonderful, but say you do not want to pay $30 a month. You're like, I don't like AI. I don't trust it. I'm skeptical. Guess what you could do. That's totally free right now. You could do um, imagine. So imagine.meta.com. And I have that in your resource. Um, sheet as a link. Um, if you have Facebook and you have Instagram, you have Meta, you just sign up. It takes two minutes and you could start creating graphics. Um, and it's text to image. So you type three to four words, a Yorkie on a paddleboard, drinking wine, boom, you got it. You're done. So these are the ones that I recommend. Um, and all the graphics in this presentation were made with AI. Okay, next. So we talked about the future. So in summary, I just want to let you know that AI is here to stay. It is not going anywhere. If you read any magazines, I have this wonderful app called Curio. So it reads to me before I go to sleep, the Wall Street Journal and Wired Magazine. You're like, how does she know all this? I have a bedtime story from, from the Wall Street Journal. And it's telling me that the number, all of the, the, the new startups that are being funded are AI. And when you look at the companies that are going to the trillions, Google, Facebook, um, and, and this other company, I can't remember that, it's called Nevada. They're all companies that have to do with AI. AI is going to grow. It's here to stay. It's not leaving. So how do we make it work for us? How can you as a small business owner leverage the resources of AI to be able to grow and scale your small business? Well, I have done a lot of research over the holidays. I have no kids, so I have time time to do this kind of stuff. So um, I created a cheat sheet for you, which I'm going to have Ashley email you. You can also click there. And it's basically a Google document, and it's an ongoing document. So I'm constantly adding to it. So when I discover, like I discovered Google has a free AI training class. I just taught you generative AI. But for those of you that want to learn all the AI. Google has a free class on AI that you can take and you can learn from. I'm also going to be developing an AI class with Santa Barbara City College. I'm so excited. It's going to be a certificate program through the Extended Learning Center that's going to be coming. That will be soon offered to you. Um, but this cheat sheet is available. I've done all the research. I've broke everything up into categories. Um, I also have included, I think it's on the next slide, is I've created a YouTube playlist. So if you wanna know the sources for my information, um, I have a YouTube playlist that you're gonna be able to click on. Um, but for right now, your action steps would be, check out the free version of ChatGPT. Anything you could imagine or conceive of that could help you grow your business, give it to ChatGPT, challenge it, see if it can do this. Whatever you think that they can't do, ask it to do just to see if it can do. And you'll be like, whoa, I didn't think you could write that good of a blog. Oh, I didn't think you could do a good newsletter. Oh, like I'm doing a workshop. I had it write a confirmation email for my workshop. I'm like, I'm not that detail oriented to remember. Bring this, bring that. I'm like, thank you. Second thing, 
is watch this Canva Magic AI video. So there's a tutorial for you on Canva Magic that's on YouTube. It's only 19 minutes. You can watch it on fast speed um, while you're walking or whatever you're doing. Um, it's a great video. Um, also consider doing the imagine.meta so you can start playing around with graphics and then check out my cheat sheet. And with the cheat sheet, you could only look at the topics that are of interest to you. The cheat sheet isn't for you to go to each one of those things. It's just a resource for you. So as needed, it's there for you. Next slide, please. Okay. So the other thing that I, so here is um, the link to my YouTube video. So every time I learn something new about AI, I put it in a YouTube playlist. And if you're interested in going deeper, you can watch any of the videos that are interesting to you. That's a video about podcasting. I have another video on basic AI, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also have an Instagram training, if anybody's interested in that. I also have a free prompt tool that will help you have better prompts on ChatGPT. We'll talk about that next webinar. Um, the Google AI training I put there. Next slide. I also want to announce I am going to be doing a live training um, March 25th in Santa Barbara. I know we have some Santa Barbara people here, beautiful Santa Barbara. It's going to be through SCORE Santa Barbara on Monday, March 25th at noon. So if you're interested in more, you can stay connected with me. I'm going to be starting a new AI Instagram. So all the tools that are updated, I'm going to put it on there. And that's it. I will turn it back over to Ashley for some more announcements of our next webinar, what's coming up next with WE. Thank you so much for your attention. I know it was a lot of information, but I'm here to support you um, and to help you to make AI work for you. Deborah, thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, we're so lucky to have you and your expertise in our community. Um, I think there's always so much more to learn, especially when it comes to AI. Um, so definitely encourage you to stay connected with Deborah um, with her information that she shared on the screen. And I'm also just really excited to share that Deborah is a Weave instructor. And so if you want more Deborah and you want more information and learning and all of the wonderful things that she has to share, um, encourage you to join some of our upcoming classes that I'm going to talk about just briefly. Uh, so we have many of you, I'm just curious, show of hands, how many of you are, are new to Weave? I've never, um, you can raise your hand physically if you have your camera on or just raise your hand um, with the Zoom functions how, or even put in the chat. How many for you is your very first time joining a Weave program? or offering, several of you. Wonderful, well, welcome. We're really so happy to have you um, and just you know, love to connect and support uh, business owners in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. And WEAVE is known for, we've had for many, many years, a program called SET. It stands for Smart Entrepreneurial Training. And if you ever, somebody says, oh, I took the Weave program in uh, 2002, they're talking about the SET program. And that actually, Deborah is teaching our SET program, co-teaching with one of her our, uh, wonderful um, colleagues who has the business legal finance side of things. And then Deborah, coupled with her marketing AI expertise is gonna be a beautiful marriage for our SET program in Ventura Accounting starting soon. Um, that's a soup to nuts, very comprehensive business training program, 14 weeks that you come out with a business plan, but most importantly, it's community, um, really just um, putting you together with a group of like-minded uh, entrepreneurs, and that's starting on February 7th. Uh, that's our English program called SET. Another program um, that's a totally free, 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 zero dollars, zero cost, um, through EDC's Digital Upskilling Training Program is Get Your Small Business Online. So for those of you who maybe you have a website, but you don't have your e-commerce going, or you feel like you want to get your social media going in 2024, this is the class for you. Uh, it's a, actually a nine-week class that meets in the evenings, mostly via Zoom. Um, and again, it's totally free. Deborah is teaching the Ventura County cohort and up in 
Santa Barbara County um, in Goleta, we have a wonderful instructor, Jill Agonias, teaching. Um, both of the, the, the Gizmo uh, classes are available in Spanish. Um, the, the, the fechas, the dates in, uh, for the Spanish class in Ventura, it will be starting in April, also likely starting in April in Spanish in um, Goleta. So those two um, classes definitely recommend for existing business owners. Set is just in English um, and get your business online is in both English and Spanish. And then just the last class that I'll share is the explore class. It's for pre-business. So for people who don't have their business started yet, but really want to get into growing their business, we have our explore class. Um, submit an interest form if you want to connect more with Weave uh, through uh, weaveonline.org slash business classes. Um, you can also email me directly. I'll drop my email address in the chat at the end um, and just stay connected with we. We encourage you to find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, join our newsletter is the, really the best way to know about we programming. So when you submit an interest form, just go on our website and uh, uh, it'll say join or sign up for Weave's newsletter.